This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. If you go to theyoungturks.com slash GoDaddy, you get the best promo codes in the world. Let's go to the opinion of the President of the United States. So, uh, as you all know, as you all know, the President has been uh, back and forth on the uh, story of Egypt. And uh, in the beginning, he was like, oh, protesters, very interesting, very good. Then later, he was like, well, Mubarak, not so bad. And then back to protesters, not so bad either. Back to Mubarak, well, come on, he'll lead the way to democracy. Which, of course, was a giant joke. I called it out as a joke. I was right. Now, now that the protesters look like they are back into the swing of things, back in, in, in a situation where it looks like they're going to win and Mubarak is going to lose, the President of the United States has thrown his weight behind the protesters. Now, is it Johnny come lately? Is it Barack come lately? Absolutely. Uh, Nicholas Kristoff in the New York Times said he's spinning around like a weather wane. Which way is it going to go? Which way is it going to go? Oh, yeah, never protesters. And that's entirely right. I've been telling you about that for the last two weeks, right? But, look, in the end, what you do does matter. And it appears the president, I know it took a long time, and partly it had to take a long time for good diplomatic reasons, okay? It took much longer than I wanted. But it looks like he has finally made up his mind. Uh, t today, Mubarak, in his speech, said, I don't care what any foreign government tells me. It cannot dictate to me. I took that as a clear reference to the United States of America. Earlier in the day, we had heard about Joe Biden, and, and yesterday as well, trying to tell Mubarak, you're done. You really got to go. We're going to hand it off to Suleiman, who I know is just like you anyway, but we're all going to pretend that's not the case, and we're going to pretend he's for democracy. And look, I would have had my problems with that, but at least they were transitioning Mubarak out. Mubarak comes and gives this perplexing speech where nobody's entirely sure what he's talking about, but basically saying, no, I'm not going to leave. Well, the president just put out uh, his own statement, and I think this one is fairly clear. Once again, I would have made it clear, but nonetheless, let's uh, read it and so you know what it is. Uh, he said, quote, too many Egyptians remain unconvinced that the government is serious about a genuine transition to democracy. And it is the responsibility of the government to speak clearly to the Egyptian people and the world. That's what President Obama is saying, like, what the hell is that speech about? No, 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 you need to say you, you were going to leave, and you didn't say that. He continues, the Egyptian government must put forward a credible, concrete, and unequivocal path toward genuine democracy, and they have not yet seized that opportunity. That's the critical part where he says, no, <laughs> that was not the transition we were looking for, and uh, you needed to step aside, and you didn't, and we are not on your side. Very good. Clear enough. But he continues. He said, as we have said from the beginning of this unrest, the future of Egypt will be determined by the Egyptian people, but the United States has also been clear that we stand for a set of core principles. We believe that the universal rights of the Egyptian people must be respected, and their aspirations must be met. We believe that this transition must immediately demonstrate irreversible political change and a negotiated path to democracy. Still talking about a path to democracy, et cetera, at the end, but plenty good enough, and I, and I will even say clear enough. He's saying it must be irreversible, it must be now, and your earlier statement was not good enough. You need to step aside. So it, he cannot reverse this. Uh, President Obama now clearly on the record, clearly against Mubarak, and finally saying a core set of principles that we believe in that are immutable, that cannot be changed. We should always be for democracy. We took our sweet time getting there this time around, but at least for the moment being, and I think going forward, we are there, and it's nice to have the president join us in the fight for democracy. And most importantly, join the Egyptian people. So let's hope that this has real effects, including the president cutting off funding, uh, not just to Mubarak, but possibly to the military, if he thinks that's the wise course of action to motivate the military to be on our side and on the side of the protesters and not on Mubarak's side. So we will follow through on that, and obviously I'll let you know exactly where they're heading based on not just what they say, but what they do. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> man, I'm worked up, man. This Egyptian stuff is incredible. It's world-changing. It's almost once in a lifetime.
but I get a sense that going forward, it might not be so once in a lifetime. The key change is the Internet, man. This revolution will not be televised. And the Internet is making all the difference in all of these countries. That's why they're scared to death of it. You know, Google said, uh, don't do evil, right? Don't be evil. And it looks like, I don't know if it's ironic. I don't know if it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate. They are in some ways contributing to the end of evil, at least in Egypt. And it's spreading, man. It's that, that, that is what the Republicans call the contagion and a virus. Two different Republicans saying that. What we call the spread of freedom, they think is a virus and a contagion because it might topple more of their dictator friends. By the way, King Abdullah called Barack Obama today in, in a fury, apparently, according to the reports, saying, you better back Mubarak, you better not get, you know, go away from Mubarak. And, uh, of course, why is King Abdullah of uh, Saudi Arabia doing that? Of course, he's worried about his own ass. And he thinks, well, what if there's a protest here? What if there's an uprising here? Uh, is, uh, are, is the United States going to throw me out of the bus because I'm not democratic? Well, my answer is I hope so. Right? But, of course, he's worried about that. Now, look, I'm not saying Obama should hang up on him and be like, oh, so what? No, no, no. you got to do diplomacy, and you got to assuage them in ways that you can do without bending on your core principles. And apparently, that is what Obama did. Abdullah was angry about it. And, by the way, one of the things he said is, well, look, if you're going to stop uh, funding Mubarak, and obviously President Obama has either threatened that or is following through on that, King Abdullah said, well, then I'll pick up his funding and I'll give it to him. To which I thought, have at it, Hoss. That's your business, not my business. If you're going to pick up two, three billion dollars that we give to Egypt and you're going to give it instead of the American taxpayer, how do we make that deal? Okay, you give him six billion if you like, it's your money. But I don't want to give him my money. Did you know that Mubarak has bought nine private jets, Gulfstream jets for himself? Nine all paid by the United States taxpayer. We paid about $111 million for that dictator to have nine private jets for his family to fly around. They got houses in Paris, Dubai, Beverly Hills, et cetera, et cetera. It's sickening the amount of money that he has actually stolen from the American people. Not just the Egyptian people. All right. Uh, I want to go back to Christoph for a second. I know I've been going at this for a while, but it's, it's an important story. Uh, writing in the New York Times, he made some very good points. He said, quote, uh, this raises a basic question. Why does our national policy seem to be that democracy is good for, the, for Americans and Israelis, yet dangerous for Egyptians? You go ahead and answer that one if you can. And then uh, he pointed out that a new opinion survey shows that the Muslim Brotherhood has only 15% approval and its leaders get just 1% support in a presidential straw poll. So the idea that the Muslim Brotherhood would take over Egypt immediately is absurd. In fact, also in the New York Times, uh, a member of the Guidance Council of the Muslim Brotherhood wrote a, an article, Esam al Arayan, say, how do you like my Arabic pronunciation, uh, explaining that they will not be putting forward a presidential candidate. So they're not even going to run in the presidential elections. And they only have support of the 15% of the people? And they can't even get 1% if they did run, according to the polls in Egypt. So the idea of the boogeyman that Beck, Fox News, the Republicans, John McCain are all throwing out there, nonsense. All right. And one last thing for you guys. Do you know what percentage of uh, the Egyptian people are under the age of 24? 50%. That's why the Internet is driving this revolution. Those people... Uh, under the age of 24 in Egypt, they all know how to use the Internet, and they all know uh, how to organize, and they all know how to get that information, and they've lived un under this dictatorship their whole lives, and they've seen the freedom that other countries have, and they don't want to put up with this nonsense anymore. God bless the young. God bless the Internet. God bless the Egyptian people. Young Turks. Cenk, if you want to buy a domain name, you want to know the best website to go to? I already know it. GoDaddy.com. First of all, they have 24-7 customer service. If you want to download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app, boom, on your phone instantly. 
And if you go to theyoungturks.com slash GoDaddy, you get all of our promo codes, like TYT1 gets you 10% off of all your orders. TYT3 gets you a .com domain for only $7.99. You can't beat that.